The purpose of this program is to explain the procedures involved in rebuilding an Olympian rear axle. The drive to the axle is via a bevel pinion and bevel wheel, which in turn transmits the drive to the road wheels through helical pinions and gears positioned on each side of the axle. During the assembly procedure, measurements of the gearing, bearings and axle casings will have to be made to ensure the correct positioning of the assemblies to achieve optimum operation. Caption, pinion preload. The first item for consideration is the preload setting on the input bevel pinion bearings. However, before pressing the bearings into position, measure the pinion head thickness as this will be required later in the program. With the inner bearing in place, fit the pinion sleeve and a medium sized spacer. It should be noted that if the existing spaces are available, these should be used as an alternative to the medium spacer. Next, fit the bearing housing. At this stage, you can assemble the outer bearing and oil seal housing without the seal, or as an alternative, as seen here, the bearing can be assembled onto the input yoke complete with the oil seal housing. When located, fit the O-ring washer and retaining nut and tighten to a torque of 950 newton meters. To do this, you'll have to make provision to hold the pinion head or alternatively the pinion yoke with a flange holder. When complete, check the bearing preload with a spring balance as seen here. The preload figure is 1.7 to 2.8 newton meters, which is equal to a spring balance reading of 2.5 to 4.2 kilograms when the radius of the bearing housing is taken into account. You will notice that the bearing housing can rotate independently of the seal housing. Therefore, although the seal is in position, it does not affect the preload figure. If new bearings are used, use the higher preload figure and the lower with existing bearings. Should it be found that the preload is too high, it will be necessary to introduce a thicker shim spacer or a thinner shim if too low. Caption, pinion assembly into casing. The next stage is to select the shims required to locate the pinion assembly into the axle casing correctly. During the production of the bevel pinion and wheel, they are machine lapped together, at which point they are given a corresponding pairing number, which appears here on the pinion and here on the bevel wheel. Whenever new parts are fitted, you should always ensure that you fit a matched pinion and wheel by reference to these numbers. The next stage of the production process is to run the pinion and bevel wheel on a special machine which is able to adjust the backlash to the recommended figure and also the depth of mesh to obtain the correct tooth contact. When a satisfactory mark is obtained, as seen here, the operator etches onto the pinion and wheel the correct mounting distance. In the case of the pinion, this distance is this dimension here from the back of the pinion head to this theoretical point. The same procedure is also applied to the bevel wheel, measured from this face again to a theoretical point which intersects with that of the pinion. If, for example, the pinion and bevel wheel do not require adjustment from standard, the dimensions would be 7.952 inches and 6.524. In principle, the aim is to position the pinion and wheel into the axle casing to obtain a duplicate running position to that achieved by the machine operator. However, due to machining tolerances of the component parts, it is necessary to measure the gear assemblies and axle casings in order to select the required shims to achieve this correct running position. To do this requires the use of special tools and gauges, details of which are in the workshop manual. It should be noted that all gauges are calibrated on an individual basis, 
and therefore reference must always be made to the etched dimensions on each gauge and used in the calculations. In order to shim the pinion assembly, proceed as follows. First, reference the mounting distance on the pinion, representing this distance. Next, the pinion head dimension, which was referred to earlier in the program. The final measurement is from the pinion head to the flange of the bearing housing. To do this accurately, you will be required to use the special 8-inch shim gauges attached to a straight edge. With a depth gauge, measure the distance to the pinion face. When making the calculation, add the shim gauge dimension, which in this case is 8 inches, to the straight edge thickness, which is 0.75, and deduct the depth gauge reading. With all these dimensions now available, deduct B from C and add A. This will give the overall dimension from the bearing housing flange to the theoretical mounting point. The next item for consideration is the casing dimension, where the pinion is located. During production of the casing, the operator measures from this face to the axis of the bevel wheel pinion, as seen here. If no correction is required, this distance would be 12.677 inches. Here's an example where the casing has an error, which is stamped here. In this instance, plus one, which means that the casing dimension is 12.677 inches plus one thou. In order to determine the shim pack thickness for the pinion bearing housing, deduct the axle casing dimension from that of the pinion. The pinion assembly at this stage can now be dismantled and assembled into the casing. During the assembly, ensure that the pinion housing shims are located correctly, as seen here. In addition, apply Loctite Type 242 to the pinion spline before fitting the pinion yoke. The Loctite should form a quarter inch bead, approximately half an inch from the inner end of the yoke. The pinion nut should then be tightened to the specified torque. The next item to be fitted is the bevel wheel assembly. Again, in this instance, you will be required to measure the casing and bevel wheel assembly to establish the shim pack for correct location. First, the casing. Place the height gauge 0153 in the bearing recess close to the pinion. With the straight edge placed across the casing, a measurement can be taken with a depth gauge to the top of the height gauge. To establish dimension A, we must take into account the height gauge, which in this instance is 7.440 inches, plus the depth gauge reading, minus the straight edge dimension of 0.75 inches. A mounting distance is etched on the bevel wheel, and if the mounting distance is standard, the figure would be 6.524 inches. If the etch figure is greater than this, for example 6.526 inches, this would mean that the correction figure would be plus 2000. Should the figure be less, it would be minus. The next area to be measured is the bevel wheel assembly. To carry out this operation, place the assembly on a surface plate and attach the 8 inch shim gauges to the straight edge. With a depth gauge, measure the distance to the top face of the bevel wheel. The overall height will be the shim gauge, which is 8 inches, plus the straight edge dimension of 0.75 inches, minus the depth gauge reading. This dimension C is constant at 0.905 inches. If we add dimension B to C, plus or minus the bevel wheel correction figure, this will give the overall height. At this stage, subtract the bevel wheel assembly height from the casing dimension A, and this will give the required shim pack required under the inner bevel wheel bearing track. The next stage is to establish the shim pack for the outer bearing. To do this, measure the bearing recess, as seen here, to give dimension D.
With the shim gauges and the straight edge, measure the overall height of the bevel wheel assembly to give dimension E. The dimension calculation will be the shim gauge plus the straight edge minus the depth gauge reading. From an earlier exercise, the casing depth A is already known. If A is added to D minus E, this will give the shim pad required under the outer bearing track to give the assembly a zero end float. In order to give the bearings a preload, remove a 3000 shim before fitting the bearing track. Fit the bevel wheel assembly into the casing and temporarily fit the bearing support plate secure by four equally spaced bolts. The bevel wheel backlash should now be checked at four equally spaced points and should be 10 to 13 thou. If the backlash is incorrect, shims will have to be transferred from the outer bearing to the inner to increase backlash and in the reverse direction to reduce. At the same time, reference should be made to the tooth marking, which should be rechecked to ensure that they match those obtained by the machining process. Moving now to the assembly procedure for the helical gears. With the gears in position and with the bearings and tracks in place, measure the height from the support plate. The shim gauge in this instance is 5.505 inches long. Therefore the calculation will be 5.505 plus 0.75 minus the depth gauge reading. Next place height gauges in the casing. This gauge is 4.352 inches and this 4.328 and calculate the depth of the casing using the straight edge and depth gauge. Now subtract the gear heights from the casing depth. This will give the shim pack to give zero end float. In order to give both gears end float deduct from the shim pack two to four thou shims before installing the shims and bearing tracks. The helical gears on the opposite side of the axle are measured and shimmed in an identical manner. This now completes the program on the Olympian rear axle.